Welcome everyone to a new gameplay series on Escape Velocity Nova. Escape Velocity Nova is a space exploration, action, trading. It's one of those, uh, you know, space action games where you can go around and choose whatever you want your pilot to be, whether you want him to um, become really s proficient in combat, get a combat ship, or you want him to get a big trading vessel. Uh, anyways, the choice is yours, and I, I really like these kind of games. What I'm going to do is actually play through the intro of this game, read through it. This is a text-based game as far as the story um, elements go. And I really find, just as a, I think a very important remark to make, the story in this game is one of the best I've ever experienced. It's all text-based, but if I, uh, hopefully this background music isn't too loud. It's pretty loud for my headphones, but I tried to turn it down a bit on the recording software. Anyway, uh, so let's just do a new pilot and jump into a game, test it out a little bit, and uh, hopefully give you guys a, an impression of what the game's like. And I will continue with this Let's Play for a little bit. Let's try to maybe play through one of the storylines, um, which I enjoy very much. So let's do Tortu Tortuga Power. Our name will be Turtle. We'll be uh, strict gameplay, um, so that'll force us to buy escape pods and all that. This music is pretty epic. <laughs> so, okay, Tortuga Power. And the name of our shuttle will be the Tortoise Shell. Alright, so let's enter the ship, get into the new game. I'll read through this opening. Mankind has colonized the stars. The early explorers launched themselves and their followers into the void with little or no idea what the future would hold. Many were never heard from again, until a genius named Omada Kane came to the fore. Kane designed and orchestrated the construction of the Hypergate system. The Hypergates were a means of linking systems light years apart with wormhole technology. A great boom of colonization began, and the dark reaches of space were suddenly not so dark nor so distant. The ruling body of humanity, the Colonial Council, grew rich from the colonies that life, the life's blood of the Council was the Hypergate system. But the Colonial Council grew corrupt, and the sickness of that corruption spread through every layer of society. Pirate attacks became more prevalent, criminals flourished, and politicians became military governors. The emasculated council could do nothing. Terrorists destroyed the sole hypergate and crippled the network. Overnight, entire systems were cut off from civilization and society was thrown into a state of anarchy. Few could have foreseen the events that followed. Warlords arose, empires sprung up and collapsed just as quickly, and all the while, the people of the galaxy suffered in a new dark age. Planets sank into feudal states and much technology was lost, seemingly forever. Yet, from this chaos rose order. A newly reformed council advanced faster than light technology and slowly regained contact with lost worlds of humanity. Over time, the core systems of human space formed a new ruling body, the Federation. Life is now a cheap commodity in a dangerous universe. To the south lies the Auroran Empire, a savage race. The mysterious Polaris hold the east, while the north and west are unexplored. You have just purchased your first ship, a shuttle that you hope will lead to better things. You are ready to start your maiden voyage. The universe, with all its diverse beauty and terrors, awaits you, Captain. Ah, that storyline just gives me chills. So here we are. Whoa, we're in the middle of a battle too. God, get out of the way. Looks like the Aurorans, the Aurorans and the, oh no, this is the Polaris. So the Polaris and the Federation are at war. Um, we're going to try to land on this station, which, is this Port Kane? Must be. Yeah, it is. Oh god, they're almost hitting me. <laughs> oh god, they are attacking me. Ah! Okay, wow. That was a very exciting start to this game. Um, just a brief note, what's going on here? Oh my gosh, <laughs> so much. The red up here is my shields, and the gray right below it is my armor. So shields do slowly recharge over time, as you've seen, but... Um, armor does not until you land where it is automatically repaired. I'm going to hit double tap L to land and boom. Now this begins the tutorial um, with a man named Barry. He's uh, one of my, well, I don't know, all the characters in this game are um, really fun to interact with. I, I get like a real kick out of reading the storyline that, that was presented, that is presented to us. So I'll read through this, but what we'll probably do is actually not go through the tutorial. Um, let me just read through it real fast, and then we'll take a second to think about it. <clears throat> All right. As you wander around a spaceport for the first time as a fully-fledged ship's captain, 
a weather-beaten man in his early fifties by the look of him comes over. You look a little lost, my boy, he drawls in a gravelly voice. You look like I did when I had just taken my first flight as a ship captain. Mind you, that was nearly thirty years ago, but I never forgot that day. Tis a grand feeling being a captain of a starship, and that first landfall is something you'll never forget. You smile and admit that you have indeed just made your main voyage. And he slaps you on the shoulder with a wide grin. Congratulations, son, he says, shaking your hand with genuine regard before stepping back and looking at you with an almost calculating look on his face. When I first made landfall, I remember running into a guy by the name of Gary, and he was just looking to settle down after plying the spaceways for a few decades. In exchange for passage, he showed me the ropes and how to get started in this crazy universe of ours. Well, I guess what comes around goes around, he smiles, nodding at you. So I guess I'll make the same offer to you. What do you say? So this um, is Barry's tutorial, and it is, uh, it's unnecessary if you know how to play the game, but it's almost something I redo every time, just because I love the story uh, elements so much in this game. Um, and when you drop off Barry Man, it's almost, you, it's like brings you almost to the point of tears. There's a lot of emotion. Um, he looks out for you the whole tutorial. You really feel like you build this um, would-be bond, I guess. <laughs> as much as you can in a, in a video game of course but anyway i'm actually gonna say no or hmm how about this let's say yes but then let's drop him off um let's skip basically everything so i'll say yes and he'll probably give us some more dialogue it'll be good to pass on some of the things i learned he smiles a distant look in his eyes and i think old gary bless his heart will be smiling wherever he is well he continues after a short moment of reverie Enough living in the past, it's the future we need to look at. Eventually, I want to head over to Dunroman in the Journey's End system. But I tell you what, let's head to Earth and the Soul system, and we'll take it from there. <clears throat> to do that, he explains with a warm smile, just click the OK button below, and then on the Leave button in the main spaceport. So yeah, there's a bit of a breaking the fourth window here, right? <laughs> He's talking to us about gameplay elements, but that's nice. It's done in a pretty um, uh, continuous, secular way. It doesn't really feel story breaking. All right, so um, <clears throat> once you are out back out in space, if you have kept the factory settings for your keys, if not, use the key setting you decided on. Hit the M key to bring up the map and start plotting a course towards Seoul, the system with the red arrow pointing at it. To help you out with this, I'll enter in the Seoul coordinates from my pocket comp. When you're ready, he concludes quietly, accelerate out a safe distance from the center of the system and hit the J key to make the jump into hyperspace. Repeat this as often as you have to. If you find yourself in a system that doesn't link in the direction you want, just backtrack a little. And if you run out of energy, just land somewhere and refuel. So that's our um, really all of the exposure we're going to have with Barry, unfortunately, because we'll probably dump him pretty early on. But what I'm doing here is the backslash key. It's kind of a faster way of bringing up the map. Because when you hit map, although we'll do it here, I'll hit M right after we jump. Pop. M. If you hit M right after you jump, you're not close enough to the system, so you can see the the icon went right white right away. However, if I continue to drift, it'll turn off white, so we can see hyperspace soul is now gray. That's because I got too close to the center of the system. You have to be a distance away to be able to jump. So there it is. Oh, derelict vestal. Oh, this is interesting. I'm gonna hit the tilde key to. There's a derelict vessel here, and Hanuman is uh, hailing me. So I use the tilde key just to cycle through everything, but let's go investigate this derelict ship. Sometimes these guys can be uh, trapped pirates that try to get you to come over and then they activate. What I'm gonna do is hit B to board this ship. So you match velocities with the derelict ship and dock with it. Passing through the airlock, you are surprised to encounter the surviving crew of the vessel who are overjoyed at their rescue. Thank you, Captain, says their captain. Regrettably, this ship is damaged beyond repair. If you would be so good as to transport us to Moonview, however, I have enough savings to reward you for this rescue. Could you give us a lift? I'll say yes, because it's an easy moneymaker, and it's an opportunity for us to kind of demonstrate combat in a very simple way. I'm holding spacebar to fire right now, um, whoop, as soon as this fed guy goes away. Now, my ship has almost no firepower, as you'd expect from um, the basic shuttle in the game. It barely has anything useful in it at all. But eventually, I will destroy this derelict vessel. And there's no reason why I would do that, other than just to have fun blowing up a vessel. So let's continue on our journey to Seoul. 
And eventually we'll have to take this crew, because now special you'll see in the bottom right over there it says multiple. Um, that's because we have two missions. One is to get Barry to Seoul, and the other one is to get this crew to wherever it is. If I hit I, Moonview. Okay, but let's dock at Seoul first. Going a little too fast. There it is. As you land, Barry gives you a hand to shut down your ship, telling stories about the times that he didn't complete his post-flight routine, and about all the troubles he had because of it. Well, maybe we should make a start, he mumbles, rubbing his chin. How about we head over to the Trade Center, click on the Trade Center button after you click the OK button below, and we'll begin your tutorial, I guess. Great, so now he's going to ask me if I want to do some missions, but I'm going to just decline him immediately, which is a little unfortunate, but I'm not going to spoil the whole tutorial with him. I highly recommend if you decide to play this game that you do it though at least once. So uh, to give you a head start, he continues with a dry, quiet, dry smile. I'll show you a couple of easy runs that should get you started. What do you say? I'm gonna say no. And I understand. Barry nods, smiling quietly. You want to get out there and do all this on your own without some old fogey hanging on your back. Still, I'm holding you to the original agreement of lift of the of a lift to Dun Roman and the Journey's End system. And I'm perfectly okay with that. In fact, I, I'm a little loath to not complete the time with him, but that's fine. So let's go ahead and get him over to Dunroman, which I happen to know off the top of my head. I know this system like the back of my hand. So let's go that way. Quickly press M so we can get this map up before we get too close to the edge of the system, or the center of the system. <clears throat> and one more jump should do it to Journey's End. But a lot of emotion, even in the Barry tutorial, if you enjoy text based stories, which I do. So. And as soon as we get over here, we'll decrease our velocity, L to land. And there we go. I wish you well, son, Barry says in, a gravelly vo in his gravelly voice. I'm sure you'll do fine. And with that, he turns and leaves, soon disappearing into the spaceport, leaving you alone and ready to take on the universe. Fantastic stuff. Okay, great. So how do we take on the universe? Well, typically you do that by mission BBS. And being in the game, although this is not a good example, Rather or... Oh, Syracuse is that one. Rather, I think, is... Oops, up here, isn't it? It is. Hmm. I think we'll just drop these guys off first and see if there's a mission there, because I prefer not to ferry passengers. It's better if you can take goods around. So we'll go ahead and leave. And the next trick I'm going to showcase is caps lock. If you hit caps lock, you'll notice in the top left we're at X2. It's going to make the game go a little bit faster, which is nice, because especially in the beginning, unless you're in combat, things are pretty simple. Move, jump, 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 land, take a new contract. But I kind of like the feel when you're just building up your uh, pilot, just making money. Ooh, I hope that's not an enemy. Good God. Yep, it is a pirate, so I might have to jump. Oh, I don't have the ability to jump out of here. Looks like he's going to go down. You can see his armor is down to 71. Oh, he's not going down, is he? Oh my God, there's a lot of pirates here. I'm going to go ahead and land on this planet. Because, I think Mars is out here or something. Europa. Because those pirates could go after me at any point. Oh, they disabled a fed destroyer. They're probably landing on it, though. I mean, this is super risky, but I would, in a way, like to go over there and try to conquer some of these ships. That would be a big break if we could steal the credits off of a federal destroyer. What are they going after right now? So the ships, the shields of the Manticore, which is a huge pirate vessel, are going up, which is bad. Indicating that, yeah, they're probably... Uh-oh, Velos reinforcements. That's good. Those are Federation. Here they go. Let's see how they deal with this. Oh, yeah. This guy's a, a goner for sure. In fact, I'm going to sneak over. I'm going to turn off caps lock the 2x speed. I'm going to see if I can sneak over to that Federation destroyer. If we can dock with it um, and board it, we might be able to get some money. 
Basically, that manticore did all our work for us. Oh, I need to select it. Oh my gosh, can we get it? Oh my gosh, no! <laughs> so we tripped the ship's security self-destruct mechanism, but the good news is we were able to steal 113 credits. Well, that's a fantastic start for us. Let's stop here. Oops, let's um, hit N to, de to cancel our landing there, and let's land on Earth. Oh dear, it seems like us landing on that board, trying to board the ship have made us an enemy of the state. Why can't we land on Earth? Okay, well, Europa will let us land. We might have done something bad. <laughs> but that's okay, I mean, we'll respect the actions in the game. Recharge. Mission BBS. We need to get these passengers. We don't even have enough. We only have 10 tons in this initial shuttle, which is very low. So we don't have the tonnage to actually do these deliveries yet. Which means that first, we're going to have to drop off our... I'll go back to 2x speed. We're going to have to drop off these guys. Is it... I think it's this one. It could have been to the left, the more diagonal to the left one. Yeah, it was. Huh, shoot. Oh, that's not a good start. Now, is, are these guys still pissed at us? No convictions. Doesn't that mean we're... Yeah, they don't like us, do they? Hmm. Okay, well. We're gonna have to deal with not being able to land on a few planets for a while. I think once we do a few missions... Oh gosh, I don't like that. Oh, the Aurorans. Ah! Oh gosh, docking request denied. Oh wait, we have pyro whatever here though. I think we can land on that one. Good. We just wanted to recharge. It would be nice if they had an outfitter here because I should explain all the stuff you can get in the outfitter, but for now, the main thing is get us to this planet, drop them off, <clears throat> and then, uh, oof. then we'll try to figure out how we can repair. So 113,000 in credits, was it worth it? Probably not, because the not being able to land on the Federation planets is probably worse. Moon view, moon view, there we go. The merchant captain thanks you profusely once more and pays you 75,000 credits in thanks before joining the rest of his crew and attempting to raise money for a new ship. Wow, so that's fantastic. Here's the outfitter. It's all the stuff that we can buy for uh, our ship. Eventually, we're going to need this escape pod and auto eject. That's only because I did turn on strict play. So once we're dead, we're dead. We'll buy this map, though. It's kind of nice to buy maps. They're only a thousand. So it's nice to buy maps to give you an idea of all the different systems around. It would be nice if we were able to, to buy a map at the Federation. Now, I think just doing missions will get our standing up with the Federation eventually. So let's start doing these. Where's Trishka? Over there. So let's go ahead and accept. And this is the main money-making device, I would say, is doing these little missions. <clears throat> so, it's kind of nice to come home. It's very stress-relieving for me. I like doing these missions where you're just casually... Oh, we waited too long. You're just casually moving around, doing one mission after another, making money for your character. It's, um, it's very soothing. And I really like a lot of the games like this. I mean, I could just as e easily have done a series on... X3, either Reunion or Terran Conflict. I think they're both very good games. Oh dear. So, Earth, will you let us? No, they're still going to be dingleheads about it. Okay, well that's fine. We'll land on Europe. Uh, because they let us land. And we'll get out of here. Now, there's a lot of text that you can read about the different planets and stuff, too. And if you play this game, I really do recommend you spend the time to read through everything because it's such an immersive universe. And um, I know I'm harping on this quite a lot, but I really do feel like the the writing of the story is second to none. It's fantastic. Very compelling. Okay, so what is the eventual goal of this gameplay series? I think what we should do is there's like about seven or eight, I think, plot lines that you can go through. Good. We already made a fair chunk of money, so it might be time for us to... Let's buy a map real fast. 
probably didn't need one here because we knew most of what was around here. Oh, wow. So it says no convictions here, but they don't look very happy with us, do they? This is orange, which I understand, but red means they don't like us. So we'll probably have to do something in order to pay off Soul to get back in their good graces. I don't know exactly what I'll do, but what do we go to a shipyard and we get a heavy shuttle? So these don't cost much, but basically um, the current ship I have, if I hit, was it C? No. P. Yeah, P. So this is my current character. Um, we have a turn rate of 120 degrees per second, acceleration of 250, and max speed of 400. Generally, I find that the heavy shuttle is no worse. And uh, one thing I didn't mention about our current situation is we hmm, can't look at it from here. Well, over here, we can see that our cargo space is 10. We can probably see that from the Trade Center, too. Free space, 10. If we go to the Outfitters, we can see that our, um, da, 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 here, our space, our actual, like, ship space for new equipment is only 8. That's pretty low. So it's 8 and 10. If we get this heavy shuttle, clicking on the info here, space is 12 compared to 8, and cargo is 15 compared to 10. Some of the more expensive, like higher paying um, jobs require you to have cargo of at least 15. So let's just go ahead and make the initial investment very quickly by the heavy shuttle, which we will call, I mean, oops, caps lock, tortoise shell two, the tortoise shell two. So that's gonna take us around. We'll stick to the tortoise shell and that's gonna be helpful. Now we have 15 in cargo, which means that we can take, some of these deliveries are more than 10, uh, the higher paying ones. They usually pay around 18,000 instead of 15. Let's see which one of these we would like to do. That one looks pretty close. One, two, three, four, four jumps away. And our new um, heavy shuttle has four jumps instead of three. So that's perfect. <clears throat> so I hope that just doing a few missions, these BBS missions, I think it will eventually reward us with a Federation credit for the government. But this video has gone on about 20 minutes. So as soon as we get to this other location, Let's go ahead and call this video to a close. I hope this was a nice uh, intro look at Escape Velocity Nova if you've never seen it. It's a fantastic game. And like I was starting to say, the end, end goal of this playthrough will probably be to go through one of the storylines, which I'll just let the game randomly choose for me. And uh, just to explore that, there's, I think I said this, but about eight storylines, Trusa, which I think, oh yeah, we have it. Perfect. So there we go. We're just already up to 230,000 credits and a heavy shuttle. Not bad. So the Trusa was at the um, eight storylines. We'll look through one of them. And that's, I guess, all I want to say. So thanks for watching this, and I'll see you in the next episode.